Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, but this time it's going to be on Ritual Beasts, some of the new Turn 1 Ritual Beast combos that we have access to, now that we have Ritual Beast, Ulti, Kimo, and Falcos in the card pool. Now, this card was released in the OCG's Link Reigns pack as a bit of legacy support for Ritual Beasts, and we do not know when we're going to be getting it in the TCG as of yet. It's going to probably be imported in one of the sets as an OCG import sometime in 2018. I'm hoping that we get the card before National Season, really ramps up and before nationals because i'd like to play with this deck potentially during that time frame but basically we don't know when we're getting the card but if you're playing on Yu-Gi-Oh pro or online or whatever then that usually doesn't really matter because we're able to play with the card right now so that's why i'm doing these combo tutorials now i was looking around online for ways to play ritual beasts a little while back and it turns out that just not very many people had very good ulti Kimo, and falcos combos that they were utilizing or the ones that did were doing OCG format where Ulti Conahawk is at three and in the TCG that card's at one. So like we have to we have to try and play with what we've got if we're gonna be ready for this card to drop on us at any given moment. But basically what I'm gonna be showing you in this video is a couple of Ritual Beast combos that are the standard bread and butter combos, the opening combos of like Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu or whatever. And if I make a part two to this video, it will be with some of the more specific openings that, you know, you can build your deck around utilizing, but they are a little bit harder to execute. But basically, what Ulti Human Falcos typically allows you to do in your new combos is set up turn two kill shots very efficiently, but you usually get to use Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu to get three searches, one of which gets committed to the field, but the other two are Steed's Ambush, as always. And you basically get to, if you do it right, end with a very strong board against board wipes, end with basically being able to steeds your opponent for four without using ambush, a bunch of different stuff like that. But you'll see what I'm talking about when I show you the combos more in depth. But so for this video, like I said, I'm going to be showing you the Elder Conahawk and Elder Rampangu combos, the simple bread and butter combos, and then maybe I'll do another video showing you the more specific ones. But... With that out of the way, let's not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into some of these combos. Alright, so the first combo I'm going to show you is the new take on the old classic, the old tried and true bread and butter Elder Conahawk combo. Now the original Elder Conahawk combo yielded you two searches for Steed's Ambush and you started your opponent's turn with two Ritual Beast monsters on the field, a Beast and a Tamer, and that lets you Steed's them for two or four if you wanted to prematurely use your Ambush to hit four cards. Now with the Kimun Falcos in the mixture, we have access into getting three searches, Two of them are going to be staying on the board as Steed's Ambush, but the third is a monster that gets committed to the play to make the play bigger. And you end with Kimo and Falcos, and then two Ritual Beast monsters next to it on your field, with Steed's Ambush set at the start of your opponent's turn. And the Kimo and Falcos is going to be able to tag out on your opponent's turn. So you can Steed's your opponent for three to four without even having to use Ambush prematurely, meaning that your play string has a lot more longevity to it if something goes wrong. So... The way you perform that combo is you're going to summon Elder and use its ability to get your additional normal summon for Conahawk. Then you're going to use Conahawk's effect to banish Spiritual Beast Rampangu from your deck. Now from here you're going to contact Fuse with these two into your Ulti Conahawk. And then your Ulti Conahawk is going to activate its effect and you're going to target Rampangu and Elder to go to your graveyard to get a search for the search effect. And then you're going to chain its ability to tag out and you're going to target Conahawk and Elder to be summoned so that Rampangu alone goes to your grave and that will yield you your search. So these will be summoned and this is your first search and you're always going to search the monster if you're going for this combo first. You're going to search Ritual Beast Tamer Laura. Now this could be Pilika. I prefer Laura because if you tag out on your opponent's turn and it dies, it doesn't go to your extra deck, it goes to your graveyard where it's still accessible with a Paleo and Ambush and all that sort of stuff. Whereas Pilika, when it dies, it being a Pendulum, goes to your extra deck, you have to kind of jump through some hoops to get it back into into your accessibility pool, and if you're playing Oracle of Zephyra, keeping Pilika in your deck is actually just better for you as well, uh, because you can draw that card, and that's a searchable card off that. So, that's just things to consider. But anyway, so from here, you use Conahawk's effect again, and this time you're going to banish a Paleo from your deck. Now from here, this is where we get really interesting with how this combo string works, is that you're going to link these two away into Ritual Beast Ulti Kimun Falcos. Now the reason we're doing this is because we want to get an additional normal summon. Now we've already gotten an additional normal summon off Elder, but we're allowed to get another normal summon off Kimo and Falcos because it is worded in a different way. Summons like Elder, Seraph Knight, Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon, uh, stuff like that, they all say you gain a normal summon in addition to your normal summoner set. 
Those, you can only ever gain one of in a turn. If I were to play Brilliant Fusion to get Seraphonite on the field, I could not Normal Summon again, because I've already gained my one additional Normal Summon over my Normal Summoner set. But the way Kimon Falcos is worded, it's worded like the true Draco spells and trap cards and the other cards in the game that just say immediately perform a Normal Summon. Not in addition to your Normal Summoner set, just immediately perform a Normal Summon, regardless of if you've already Normal Summoned or not. So that allows you to get another normal summon on top of the two you've already performed this turn with Elder's Effect and your regular normal summon. So that's how this works. So what you're going to do is you're going to use Keeman Falcos' effect and you're going to rebanish your Kana Hawk to get your normal summon for Laura. Now Laura's effect is going to trigger to revive one of your ritual beasts in your graveyard and it is going to revive Rampangu. Now from here you're going to use Rampangu's effect to gain more banished fodder by banishing a copy of Ulti Gaia Paleo which is then going to send a copy of Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda to your graveyard. So we've already got the six names that we're going to be working around with in circulation onto the field. We're just going to start messing around with their locations a bit to make them more favorable and get two more searches out of it. So from here, we're going to, uh, we're going to contact Fuse away with the Rampangu and the Laura. The Rampangu has been summoned, so I'm going to put it uh, horizontally. That's just how I always do things. Uh, the Iapaleo has not been summoned yet, so it can stay vertical. Um, <laughs> this is just the this is the way I kind of keep track of things. Cards that are that can't be summoned from my banish pile or graveyard, I always put them like horizontally, um, and for whenever I'm dealing with ritual beast shenanigans. But anyway, so uh, you're gonna tag those out or tag them, in, contact fuse them, I guess, into Ulti Hawk. You're gonna use Ulti Hawk's effect again to get a search, and this time you're going to attempt to put Ulti Guy Paleo and regular Paleo into your graveyard. You're gonna chain the tag out effect, and you're going to summon the Paleo and the Laura back and send the Gaia Paleo to the grave, which is then going to search you for your steeds or your ambush, whichever one you want to get first. Now from here, Apeleo is on the board. So we're going to use that and we're going to banish the Winda out of our graveyard so that that's back into uh, into accessibility pool, essentially, uh, for being a, a good card to tag out into on your opponent's turn because it's a floater. Like This is one of the cards we definitely want to end our board with. Uh, but then you're going to contact again with these two cards. You're going to contact them into ulti uh, Kana Hawk, and then from here you're going to get another search. Now, uh, it doesn't necessarily really impact your game which ones you put back. All you want to do is you want to make sure you keep Winda and a Paleo banished, and you want to make sure that you keep a Tamer banished, essentially, which is like impossible not to do. Uh, so you're going to put Rampangu and Kana Hawk back into your graveyard. All of your guys have been summoned except for Winda, so you can't tag out uh, to get this uh, more, make it more of an economical search. Uh, but you still get Ambush. So this is what you do for this uh, Elder Conahawk combo. So then you set these cards, and during your opponent's draw phase, because you don't want this to get Kaiju'd or dealt with in any sort of way to make it you know, not a resource for the rest of your game because we only have one, you're going to draw phase, tag this out on your opponent's turn for Winda plus a Paleo, and then you're going to use a Paleo's effect, and you're going to banish the Rampangu from your graveyard again. So... What you end up with is you end up with six names, you end up with Steeds and Ambush set, you end up with Kimun Falcos up here, you have a Tamer and a, uh, and a Spiritual Beast over here that you can tag out the Kimun Falcos for, if need be, to put you to four monsters on the field. You've got a Paleo, which is also being boosted by this, uh, and also, like, this is boosting everything by five, that's actually kind of real. Uh, but then also, this is really strong against board wipes, because if your opponent like Regeki or Dark Holes you, the Winda is going to trigger its effect, and if the Winda triggers its effect, you're just going to do something like like summon Petalfin from your extra deck or something in the extra monster zone, and which you can then just tag out to summon these two. So you're back to two monsters on the field to steeds your opponent for two, uh, and then ambush is loaded and all that sort of stuff. This deck is unfortunately just a little bit weak to evenly matched, but if you get evenly matched, you would just use steeds on all of your own monsters so they go to the graveyard, and then you keep ambush so you can in phase ambush. But no matter what happens at the end of this comp at the end of your opponent's turn, you're able to ambush or tag this out for either Rampangu or Conahawk. Like you can ambush for Elder Conahawk out of your grave and keep going with this on your board still, or you could tag this out for uh, Rampangu Laura and like that's there's it's there's all sorts of value there. So that's Elder Conahawk. That's the basic Elder Conahawk combo with Kimun Falcos. So let's look at one of the Rampangu combos, which is actually personally one of my favorites. All right, so now this combo is Elder Rampangu. And now with Ulti Conahawk being at one of the TCG, Elder Rampangu hasn't really been as great as it used to be. It was something that you could usually get two searches out of, but basically Rampangu really stopped being a very valuable 
uh, card to like work with because you wanted to set up ambush plays with Conahawk and Grave and stuff like that. But banishing your one copy of Ulti Conahawk was definitely not the way we wanted to be doing that. But with Keyboon Falcos in circulation now in the card pool, we have access to again getting three searches just like the Elder Conahawk combo. One of the searches is going to be again a monster that you combo into the uh, you put into the combo sequence to yield a better board. Now the only ending board difference here is that instead of having a Keymoon Falcos on your board, you are going to end with two windows on your field, making this even stronger to board wipes like Raigeki, Dark Hole, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, things like that. Uh, so this is personally like my favorite combo to open with. I prefer opening this over Elder Conahawk uh, because I prefer opening with the uh, extra window to be more secure than opening with the Keemon Falco still on my field. So, let me show you how this one works. It's a little bit convoluted. Uh, but, so you're going to Normal Summon Elder, gain its additional Normal Summon for Rampangu, and you're going to use Rampangu's effect, you're going to banish a guy of Paleo, and you're going to send a window from your deck to the graveyard. And then from here, you're going to contact fuse these two into Ulti Conahawk, and then you're going to use Ulti Conahawk, targeting Elder and guy Paleo to go to your graveyard, and you're going to chain Ulti Conahawk's effect to tag out, for the Rampangu and the Elder. And so Guy Pelio goes to your grave, and instead of searching like a Laura or a Pilica, like you might think, to bring this card back, instead you're just going to go out of your way to search Conahawk. You're just going to search Conahawk straight up. Uh, you're not going to search any extra Tamers or anything like that. You're still going to end this combo with six Tamer and Beast names total in circulation. Um, and like, we, you just want to have access to this card. That's the main thing, the main point. But anyway, so now we're going to use Rampangu's effect again. And we're going to banish Ulti Apelio this time to send an Apelio from deck to grave. And so now from here, we're going to link up with the Rampangu and the Elder into Ulti Kimun Falcos. And now Ulti Kimun Falcos is going to get us an additional normal summon. And we're going to do that by banishing Apelio from our grave. So you banish Apelio and you normal summon Conahawk. And so now from here, you're going to use Conahawk's effect to banish a monster from your deck. And we already have access to Apeleo, Elder, Rampangu, Winda, and Conahawk. That's five names. So basically, you just pick whatever name you want to put into circulation. It can be Win, it can be another Laura, it can be a Pilica, whatever. But you're going to put that into your Banish pile. And these are summonable. These go vertical. <laughs> Got to remember my own style. But now, use Conahawk. You use Conahawk to, uh, to put this here. And so now, this is live to tag out. So you'll tag out the Ulti Kimun Falcos and you'll tag it out for Laura and Apelio. Now Apelio is going to use its effect to banish Winda. Seems pretty alright, right? right? Uh, but so now from here, Winda has not been summoned yet, so it's vertical. Um, and then you are able to use Conahawk and Laura to go into a uh, Ritual Beast monster. So Conahawk has not been specialed yet, but Laura has. And so you're going to tag those or contact them into Ulti Conahawk. Now you're going to do the same search play. You're going to use Ulti Conahawk. You're going to target the Apelio, and you're going to target the, I guess, Conahawk. It doesn't really matter. Just Conahawk or Winda to go to the grave, and then you're going to tag out, uh, chain the tag out effect of Ulti Conahawk to summon Conahawk and Winda back to your field. The Apelio goes to grave, and you're going to get a, your search for your steeds or your ambush. So, carrying on, now what we're going to do is we're going to use Conahawk's effect again on field. Now, you could use this to get a seventh name in circulation, because you have six names in circulation, but seven is a number that's not really going to assist our combo sequence. It's not really going to assist our ending board, because this deck works on even number basis of you need a tamer and a beast to do any play. Uh, odd numbers don't really work out for you very well, and so there's no point in adding to our name count unless it can strengthen our ending board. So we can't really do that, but what we can do is we can Conahawk another copy of Winda out of our deck into the Banish Zone, and what that allows is that that allows for our ending board to be stronger, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. So you're going to Contact Fuse with the Winda and the Conahawk again into Ulti Conahawk, and you're going to use Ulti Conahawk's effect to send two to Grave, and you're going to send the Lore and the Conahawk to Grave. You're going to leave the two Windas banished, and so that's going to get you your search for Ambush. So... What you do is you're going to set these two cards, and on your opponent's draw phase, just like the previous combo, you're going to immediately tag out Ulti Conahawk, and you're going to summon the two Windows. Now this is possible because Winda counts as both a Spiritual Beast and a Ritual Beast Tamer, because its name is Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda, unlike all the other Tamers. Uh, so you're able to tag out into two of these, and you're able to summon two of them 
because you're summoning them at the same time. If you're summoning them on the same instance of being summoned, then you can summon them both. But I now can no longer summon Windows for the rest of the turn, in case any of you are confused by that. I know sometimes the Ritual Beast special summon once a turn clause can be kind of confusing, but all you need to focus on is the fact that all these cards say you can only summon one of that name with an S in parentheses after it once per turn. So if you're summoning two at the same time of any of the Ritual Beasts, you can do that. So, you'll summon two Windows here. And so now your Conahawk is safely back in its in your extra deck. You can use a Paleo to just banish one of your uh, one of your cards to get access to again, like banish a Laura or something. Doesn't really matter at this stage of the game. But this board is even stronger against board wipes than the previous one because you have two windows, and windows of floating effect is not once per turn. So you have steeds, you have ambush. You can steeds your opponent for three. You can ambush to get up to five. Um, which is, you know, that's another good thing about this is that you can just go up to five monsters. Um, but if your opponent Raigekis you or Dark Holes you or Interrupted Kaiju Slumbers you, both of these will trigger at the same time. So that means that you're able to summon like Kimun Falcos out of your deck, uh, extra deck plus a Fusion, or you can summon like Petalfin from your extra deck and summon another Paleo out of your deck to banish another card out of your graveyard. Uh, like there's there's a few different capabilities of what you have access to. Arguably the strongest one is if you do get Raigeki, these will all go to the graveyard and both your windows will trigger and what you will summon is you'll summon an ulti Petalfin out of your extra deck just because it can't be destroyed by card effects and then you'll end up summoning an Apaleo out of your main deck and what that allows you to have access to is that then the Apaleo can trigger banishing either uh, Rampangu or Conahawk and then that allows this to again tag out into these two cards and you can steeds your opponent for three again without having to use ambush so that's basically the gist of it i really like this deck this deck has very high uh ceilings for its turn two structure as long as you do turn one right uh, it's a very new player friendly deck but it's also a deck that's very very good to you if you understand all of the intricacies of what your plays can do and so that's going to be it for this combo tutorial uh, it might have gone on a bit longer than i wanted it to but i wanted to show you those two standard elder conahawk elder rampangu combos and uh, basically like give you guys the rundown of what I think is the best thing to do with them. Uh, I might do a part two to this where I show you the more intricate combos of like opening Win Gold Sark, uh, opening uh, like uh, like Brain Research Lab Gold Sark, Win and stuff like that. Uh, because there's there's a, f a few different things that change uh, based off uh, how this deck opens. Because this deck has capability of doing a lot of you know techy things um, as well with Oracle of Zephyr. There's a lot of little nuances of things that can. Uh, that can come into play. But basically, that's going to be it for this video. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. As I always say, like, comment, subscribe to all that nonsense. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, get into the Discord, do all that sort of stuff, the Patreon is the best way to do so, and you'd have my eternal gratitude. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video, and here's to a great 2018. So now the video is over, as usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertzen, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, way more than I could ever express. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.